This is something that gives people way more problems than they can probably imagine. They can be doing all the other variables they're supposed to do perfectly, but if one detail is out, even just a little bit, there's gonna be some really frustrating things that are gonna stop you from getting the welds you want. Now, when I use the term standoff distance, this is what it refers to. The term standoff distance refers to the distance from the tip of your tungsten to the workpiece itself. This distance in between these two is the standoff distance. So as you can see here, as I'm welding along in this weld pass, you can see how close I am to the workpiece. I am extremely close. I am essentially as close as I can be comfortably, which to most people would seem extremely close. Now, when working this close to your workpiece, this is not the easiest thing to manage. And this is absolutely something that gives beginners a little bit of frustration for sure as it's gonna definitely increase the chances that somebody's gonna dip and contaminate their tungsten, which obviously is a big bummer. When someone is learning, what most commonly happens is they begin to pull back their standoff distance, like you see here. While backing up a little bit like you see here definitely makes it a little easier to stay clear of the weld pool, which obviously means it's gonna be a little easier to prevent somebody from dipping. Doing this is gonna cause a lot of small things that can happen that are actually gonna do more harm than good. So while you may think you're helping yourself out by pulling back a little bit, you might end up shooting yourself in the foot with a few of the details we actually want. So a lot of the hard work and practice that they put in up to this point can actually get held back by this detail. So let's go over some of the things that can most commonly happen when our standoff distance is a little bit incorrect. And most importantly, what we can do to fix it. The most simple way to explain this is to use a term that I call arc deflection. Arc deflection is essentially where our arc cone is losing accuracy of the area that we are aiming at and the effect that this happens when this occurs. So take a look at this clip here. This is a slow motion clip of my arc starting up. We can see that the arc is having trouble establishing cleanly and the arc is being deflected. See how the arc is wandering and not locking on to where we are aiming? This is arc deflection. When things are established properly, see how it locks on and we get a good connection? This is what we want. Arc deflection bad, clean arc good. When we have properly set up a torch, as well as using the correct standoff distance and filler rod angle, we are gonna have the most accurate arc cone where our welding conditions can be the best they can be. What we're doing when we're TIG welding is essentially establishing and maintaining an electrical arc. So while controlling this, keeping our details as organized as possible is gonna get you the best results so you can get some great work done. The first thing that's gonna most commonly happen is in order to prevent dipping or contamination, like we talked about, somebody's gonna increase the standoff distance to prevent this from happening. When somebody tries to feed filler material into the weld pool, the end of your filler rod is gonna become melted or blown off completely before it even gets in the weld pool. How many people can relate to this problem? Whether it's with stainless steel or aluminum, this is absolutely something that happens to everybody. Comment below if this is something that you've struggled with in the past. Don't worry, you're not alone. So how does standoff distance have anything to do with this problem? Again, this goes back to the term we talked about earlier when I referred to arc deflection. When we increase the standoff distance, our arc is gonna be more prone to being deflected from the target we are aiming at. When we introduce filler material into the mix, as it approaches the weld pool, our arc is gonna be easily deflected from the area we are aiming at and begin to direct itself at the filler material itself. Because the arc cone is less focused at the area we are aiming at, the result is gonna be the end of the filler material is gonna get melted, which is obviously gonna create something that's gonna be very difficult to get into the weld pool itself. And sometimes if this arc deflection happens really bad, you're gonna have the end of the filler material blown off completely. This is gonna create contamination to your workpiece, and in some cases, if it's really bad, it's gonna create contamination to your tungsten as well. So here's what I recommend to my students, whether working with them in person or online in my program, we need to make sure that we are getting in as close as possible without dipping. Ideally, the sweet spot for a correct standoff distance should be approximately the thickness of your tungsten diameter away from your workpiece. So for example, if you're using a 332 or a 2.4 millimeter tungsten diameter, that measurement is gonna be the sweet spot for the standoff distance. If you're using a 1 8 or a 3.2 millimeter tungsten, you will be approximately that distance away from the weld pool. What we can do now is ensure that we have the cleanest and most properly established arc connection between the 
tungsten and the workpiece itself. When we introduce filler material into the mix, we now see that the filler material itself is gonna go into the weld puddle much easier. So if you're having problems with your filler rod being melted or blown off completely, address this issue. Whether it's for stainless steel or aluminum, this is most likely what's going on. This is a really common problem. And if you set out to pay close attention to this when you practice, this is definitely gonna get you some better results right away. And again, if you dip your tungsten, it's all good. Swap it out for a new one. Okay, the second most common thing I see in relation to standoff distance problems is exactly what we see here. Here we are looking at a lap joint where the start looks one way and by the end it looks completely different. Here we can see an example of a butt joint and exactly the same thing. As we begin to move throughout the length of our weld pass, things are completely different near the end compared to the beginning. This is absolutely something that happens to people all the time. Watch this clip here. Does this look familiar to you? At the start, we are in nice and close. As we progress towards the end of the pass, look at the difference in the standoff distance. At the start, we are in nice and tight like this. And by the end, we have drifted away to a more excessive distance and much different from the consistency of the standoff distance we started with. So again, take a look at what the weld pass is gonna look like when this happens. See how things are relatively shiny and somewhat in order at the beginning, but near the end, as we start to drift away, we can see that things start to change completely. Not as nice at the end, hey? And as you can see here, look at the arc cone as well. We no longer have a focused and stable arc. We can see that with excessive distance, this is gonna kind of look like it's sweeping out. Basically, it's gonna lose all the focus on the area that we are aiming at. So not only are we gonna have problems with it arcing to the filler material, which is super annoying, but we are absolutely gonna lose our accuracy and focus detail at the area we are aiming at. Both of these, huge bummers, right? So one thing I always like to do when I'm seeing that a student is having problems maintaining this variable is to stop and take a look at their overall posture. More specifically, how are their hands and arms placed? And most importantly, are they comfortable? I usually ask that my students get set up to take a series of photos or even better, some video. They send it back to me and it's best if it's taken from the side like this. Basically a camera angle where I can see about waist up. Most importantly, I wanna see a detailed look of how their hands and arms are placed. Sometimes I see something like this where their hands are somewhat floating above the table and obviously unable to maintain a secure and comfortable position. Sometimes I see something like this where their hand is locked to the table and as they start to move, they begin to pull back with their standoff distance. There's a lot of different ways that this can happen, but it's really simple to take care of this problem so we can maintain a secure, comfortable and stable position as we travel. I usually prefer to have my arm positioned on the table, making contact somewhere around my mid forearm. Any closer to my elbow, I begin to drift away and lose comfort. Any closer where my hand is more secure to the table, this is also very restrictive as well. Also, one of the most important things to experiment with is how properly can you see everything. Make sure to have your head positioned somewhere so you can see clearly and without having anything in your way to obstruct you as you move. Like a filler rod hand, you get the idea. Everyone's most comfortable position is slightly different from one another, but whatever the most comfortable position is, we always wanna make sure we eliminate this variable that we're talking about with losing consistency with our standoff distance. We want our welding to be defined and as controlled as possible. Losing track of these details can happen really easily. And as we talked about at the beginning of this episode, we're paying attention to all of these details at once. Keeping things consistent is extremely important. This episode here is gonna keep you on track with these details. Having welds that are not a consistent width is gonna change the appearance of them drastically. That episode goes over all that information in extreme detail. I absolutely recommend watching this one next. Do a random act of kindness for strangers today. For Pacific Arctic Welding, my name is Dusty. Bill and chill, we will talk soon. Peace.